Well, I uh, wanted to welcome you to another press conference. Wanted to talk to you about a number of things uh, that are before us right now. Uh, the first of which I'll address is our uh, school CIP. Many of you know that the county uh, and the county executive uh, embarked on a mission with our uh, state delegation to achieve more school construction dollars. Uh, unfortunately, we were not successful in Annapolis, although I do have to extend appreciation to uh, Senate President Mike Miller and the governor uh, for their commitment to continue a program uh, that would evaluate uh, whether or not uh, school construction dollars, uh, a, an additional program is needed uh, and warranted, and so I want to thank them for that. Uh, but because of uh, the lack of funding, uh, we did have to make some changes to our uh, impending CIP budget that have been recommended by the council. We will formalize those uh, at our uh, May 1st meeting, uh, but those include delaying all of our uh, uh, modernization projects by one year. It also includes taking uh, some additional funding from uh, our school HVAC program uh, that was sorely needed uh, to really revitalize some of the HVAC systems uh, throughout the county. Uh, I just recently, at the end of our uh, meeting, heard from the county executive, uh, who did inform us that he is uh, working on a situation where we might be able to get uh, some additional funds to help alleviate some of the pain that we're experiencing regarding our CIP budget now that we've had to make those adjustments and look forward to receiving uh, th those recommendations shortly. Uh, again, I want to uh, let my uh, parent advocates, uh, students know uh, that we are still pressing this issue. Uh, we realize how important this is, and it's unfortunate the situation that we find ourselves in. I want to thank our delegation who worked extremely, uh, extremely tirelessly uh, being able to push forth uh, this initiative. Uh, and unfortunately, what we've seen in Annapolis is that oftentimes, even though uh, a program is worthy, uh, it might not go through the first year. That's uh, unfortunately the dynamics that work in Annapolis. I've known it all too well for four years. Um, however, uh, that being said, uh, this is something that myself as the chair of the Education Committee as well as the Council President uh, takes very seriously and I will be pushing uh, very hard on all of our uh, gubernatorial candidates and whoever becomes the next governor uh, that the expectation is that we will find a solution uh, to Montgomery County's growing school population needs. Uh, this is of the utmost importance when it comes to our CIP budget uh, and look forward to uh, some sort of proposal uh, from this uh, program that they have commissioned uh, to be able to continue to move us forward in the right direction. I want to talk about uh, school resource officers and uh, school uh, stop arm bus cameras because I think that uh, they go hand in hand. Uh, the, this county is committed uh, to making sure that we are ensuring the safety of all of our children and to that end, uh, we've recommended with a joint committee of both public safety and education to add an additional 10 school resource officers, which would allow for us to have a full complement of school resource officers at every single one of our high schools. Uh, this will also enable them uh, to go to some of our middle and elementary schools as well, being that we now would have the full complement that is on our reconciliation list. Uh, with the joint committee uh, in unanimous support, uh, that was five members. So. Uh, anybody can do the math. Uh, that's five people that are already in support of this initiative. Uh, that being said, I still will remain uh, vigilant about making sure that uh, this item does uh, survive on the reconciliation list. It is extremely important, and especially since we see a number of incidents uh, that are happening uh, throughout the country uh, when it comes to uh, acts of violence uh, that are uh, happening within our school walls. And uh, these school resource officers uh, really playing a vital role, not just in the prevention of some of these uh, violent incidences from happening, but also as a resource. Uh, their middle name really gets lost a lot of times in terms of what they do, but providing the connectivity uh, for students and services that are important, as well as uh, a friendly voice that oftentimes can uh, help them in times of struggle. Uh, with regards to our school bus cameras, uh, many of you know about the story of my daughter where I saw firsthand uh, almost getting hit by a uh, person who decided to breeze not only through a school bus stop arm, but a stop sign as well. Um, as I go to schools uh, in my service as the chair of education throughout the county and have a chance to talk to young children, 
they oftentimes ask me what it is that we do, and I give them examples about ways in which we try and keep kids safe. One of them is the uh, school bus camera stop arm uh, uh, legislation that we had. And um, when I tell them uh, about it and ask them if they've ever experienced it before, uh, 90% of those children raise their hands and say that they've seen uh, a car uh, go through uh, a school stop arm. And, 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 and that really is concerning to me. We've seen the numbers that have come out, which have been staggering over uh, the course of just uh, the initial rollout uh, in this first quarter. Uh, having over 300 violations uh, is extremely concerning to me uh, because each one of those represents a child's life that was uh, potentially in danger. And so I think that uh, I agree with the county executive as well as the chair of public safety uh, that we need to ramp up this program. Uh, I do uh, think that uh, while uh, slow growth uh, is fiscally prudent, uh, I think that this highlights itself uh, to more of a safety aspect uh, and really is a social need issue. And so I'd like to see us ramp this program up quickly just based on the anecdotal evidence that we've seen uh, through some of these numbers. And so I look forward to working with the county executive staff as well as with uh, our uh, Department of Transportation and MCPD, our police department, to make sure uh, that this can happen at a quicker pace. Uh, there is no question in my mind uh, that we have just hit the tip of the iceberg and there's a much larger problem looming to where a large number of our children uh, continue to be at risk each and every day as they uh, try and get onto school buses throughout the county. Uh, last but not least, I wanted to talk to you a little bit about uh, some of the other uh, budget uh, add-ons that, that we've experienced, and I think that they all are extremely important to us, um, but we have hit uh, a threshold uh, that does uh, concern me a little bit as council president, um, so I will be meeting with uh, members of uh, the council to talk about what some of their number one priorities are, uh, as we have a reconciliation list that continues to grow and affordability continues to be a concern of mine. Uh, we've had conversations with our school system, which continue to be uh, good, great stakeholders uh, in pushing forth the ball when it comes to understanding that we are trying to do all that we can uh, to address our school system's needs uh, while still understanding that we have uh, challenges with our uh, budget affordability that will really uh, weigh in in terms of allowing us to do all that we can or want to, I should say. Uh, so from that perspective, uh, I think that we'll uh, find ourselves in a good place. I think that we all remain committed to making sure that uh, at the very beginning, uh, when I took uh, the helm as council president, said we were restoring uh, a lot of the cuts that we had seen to a lot of departments. Uh, we continue to see that through some of the recommendations, not only from the county executive, but also from the reconciliation list. And I think that uh, when we get to the end, uh, folks will be able to look back and say this is a budget that certainly uh, solidified Montgomery County as one of the best places to live, work, and play. And so with that, I'll open it up for questions. Oh, Ryan, Craig, <coughs> talk about the uh, county executives working on getting some extra money for school funding. Where is that? Is that coming from the county, or is he trying to get some money from the well, I haven't gotten the memo yet. I was just advised by Blaise DeFazio uh, with uh, Office of Management and Budget that something will be transmitted to us shortly. Uh, so I think that uh, that will be comprised in that memo and I'll have a better understanding. So at this point, I just know that there's been a commitment from the county executive uh, via our meeting this morning uh, that they were going to be sending over uh, some additional adjustments, which typically happens in any budget year. Uh, but from what I understand, this is specifically targeted at being able to address some of our problems with our school CIP budget. So would that money be coming from the county or from other sources? Uh, that I'm not sure of. It, it could be a combination of the two. I've heard that the, that the county executive has been working diligently uh, with the governor and trying to identify uh, some other ways in which uh, we might be able to secure some additional capital funding. Uh, so I just don't know what it looks like right now. As soon as I do, I'll be more than happy to share that. Uh, with members of the media, but I just don't have that in front of me. 
How did we go from the eight school resource officers that we talked about last week to 10? So there were two that were included in the county executive's budget uh, that he had originally sent over, and our additional eight uh, adds up to the uh, 10 school resource officers that we have uh, now allocated for in this year's budget via uh, the hard budget from the county executive that he sent over plus the eight on the reconciliation list. Any other questions? Was there talk of um, raising the fines on the school bus cameras? Yes, I'm sorry, I apologize. That's actually a very, very important point. Uh, there was a lot of discussion uh, at the meeting uh, to talk about whether or not the fines uh, were uh, enough. Uh, and a number of council members, including Council Member Berliner, had expressed some frustration at the fact that there is a, a $125 fine, but the law actually says you can go up to 250 and so we'll be working with uh, Judge Wolf, uh, as well as uh, Tom Didone from uh, Montgomery County Police Department, who heads up uh, traffic division there, uh, to make sure uh, that we talk about uh, the fines and make sure that they are severe enough uh, to really uh, make a difference. It's interesting, though, if you are pulled over by a Montgomery County police officer for passing a school bus camera, the fine is $570 and three points on your license. And so there is a significant disparity between what we see uh, regarding how serious the current law treats this versus what we're doing with the school bus cameras, which is doing exactly the same thing. This is capturing a video of this person uh, that's going past this school bus, uh, which is very clear. And so I know that uh, when it comes to cameras, it's very difficult to assess points, um, but we at least need to make sure. Uh, that we are uh, increasing the fine because uh, it was uh, egregious enough of a crime for us to set a penalty of $570 if an officer pulls you over. So th at least we need to have uh, an appropriate fine uh, for school bus cameras. And do you have a date for the Silver Spring Transit Center next briefing? I know you said they're going to start monthly again. I, 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 I know that a date has been set. I just saw it on one of my, but I don't know what that is exactly at this point. I, I can get that for you. Um, no, no, no. It's 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 coming up though. It is it is one of the agenda items. Uh, Silver Spring Transit Center. Do you know? Do we know when that date is? Yeah, yeah. Oh, so it is. So so it's next week. Next week. Yes. Uh huh. Any other questions? All right. Well, folks, thank you very much. Keep uh, listening because there'll be a lot happening this week. And so I look forward to a very robust conversation uh, next week about a lot of things. By then, we would have finalized uh, some decisions when it comes to the school systems budget and have a much better idea of what we're looking at when it comes to our reconciliation list. All right. One last quick question. Yes. Why would those increased fines take effect? Well, what well, would depend? You know, we already have uh, current regulations that we have to enact this week. And so once those are done and dispensed of, uh, we're actually looking at crafting a resolution that we'll be sending over. Uh, and then that one uh, could possibly take effect as early as July, sometime around there, because we'd have to give uh, time for notice, uh, posting, all of those kinds of things. So I think that within that window, that would be the earliest at which we could actually uh, have those take effect. It's very interesting though, one of the things, uh, just to make sure that folks that are watching at home spreads the word, all of our summer school uh, school buses are also going to be equipped with these cameras as well. So a message to folks, please don't pass a school bus. Again, uh, folks from the police department made it very easy and so it's a very simple message. If you see paint on the road, uh, then you know you need to stop going in both directions. If you see grass or cement dividing the highway, then you just need to stop if you're going in the same direction as the school bus. A very simple way to understand, but in reality, use caution as much as possible. Uh, these are kids uh, that sometimes aren't uh, always looking out like my daughter was when she decided to look both ways before she crossed the street. If not, she would have definitely been hit by this car. So I also encourage my parents uh, to have conversations with their children and make sure that they understand uh, that unfortunately some people are still very distracted uh, and not paying attention, and that could result in something that we really don't want, which is a 
child either being injured or losing their life. This is a very serious situation for us, and we want to make sure that everybody, whether you're a driver or you're one of the children that's walking, uh, trying to get on the bus, remain safe. Thank you. Right. Um, talked a little bit about the reconciliation last thing. When, was it announced last week that it was about eleven million dollars so far? And has that has that grown? It has. <laughs> <laughs> it has. We're approximately a little over $19 million at this point on the reconciliation list. I just didn't want to say it because if I didn't say it, maybe it wouldn't. <laughs> There's just a lot of work for us to do. A lot, of, a lot of great needs throughout the county. A lot of people are trying to address a lot of things that we're hearing from our constituency when they came out for our public hearings. And so with that, trying to address all of those needs, unfortunately, uh, is also attached to money. And so we'll certainly try and do the best that we can uh, to make sure we're addressing those problems. All right. All right, folks, thank you very much. Have a great day.